Hi, I'm Michaela Weaver and in this short video today I'm going to talk you through the four main reasons that we remain stuck and inactive when it comes to drink problems, problems with alcohol. So reason number one is that we are in denial and we can be excused for being in denial because let's face it, the whole of Western society um, is in denial as well. It is commonly accepted that people will drink in Western society, that they'll drink to excess, fall down drunk and then waking up with a hangover the next day is absolutely fine. In fact, quite often it's actually to be celebrated because that person can take their drink and uh, you know, it's almost a safe status symbol sometimes. So given that the whole of society is in denial, it's no surprise that maybe we find ourselves in denial as well. And so what happens? Well, it's a number of things really. But what happens is that taking alcohol, and I use the word taking deliberately because alcohol is a drug, taking alcohol is a socially acceptable thing to do. And in fact, alcohol is the only drug that we need to actually explain ourselves for not actually wanting to take. We have to justify not wanting to take it. And um, if that was heroin, I think it would be a completely different story. And incidentally, back in the 1950s, that was exactly where society and the norms were around smoking as well. So society and society's norms has a massive, massive influence in how we allow ourselves to get to a point where something like alcohol becomes such a significant problem without us really recognising it. And the reason for that is because, as I said, we're in denial. And so, of course, if we see stuff going on around us and we compare with our friends, how much wine do you drink every week? Well, I have, you know, half to a bottle every night. Do you? Yeah, me too. Well, that must be normal then. Whereas the truth of the matter is that taking any drug regularly implies that there's a problem. If I was consuming a bag of apples every single night of the week, and if my apple supply was down to one apple when I went into the fridge, I would probably feel a bit panicked if I had an apple problem. Just like I used to when I went to the fridge and found there was barely any wine left. And so drinking regularly is a problem. And we talk about um, drink problems in terms of alcoholics, um, people who drink to absolute excess, whereas there's a whole scale between the black and the white of greyness. And it's often referred to as grey area drinkers, where people are addicted to alcohol. They're drinking every night. Um, if they're not drinking every night, then they're binge drinking at weekends. And that is addiction. And so we find ourselves in denial of that. And maybe hearing this today will make you think about whether or not your drinking is something that's regular rather than something that you might do once a month, twice a month. Doing anything that's addictive regularly is going to lead to greater addiction. So denial is one of the massive reasons that we stay inactive and stay stuck when it comes to alcohol. And so we're in denial about taking a drug. I just want to touch on this subject just a little bit before I move on to the second reason. So we're in denial about taking a drug. Alcohol is, and you may have heard me say this before, and you will hear me say it again, alcohol is the second most addictive drug on planet Earth, and it is second only to heroin. So we're not taking an innocuous substance here, we're taking a highly toxic, addictive drug and a drug that causes so many health problems. 7% of the people who present at hospitals in the UK are there because of a primary or secondary alcohol problem. And the age group where the problems are beginning to manifest because we've been taking alcohol all our lives are people aged 40 plus. That is the danger zone in terms of the age of people who are drinking to excess. 
So the kinds of illnesses that alcohol causes, I'll just touch on a couple, but seven different types of cancers, diabetes, cardiac disease, liver disease is now the highest killer in that age group I've just told you about in the UK with similar statistics in Canada, New Zealand, Australia and the United States of America as well. So this is a, just a prolific problem. And so denial is the number one or one reason out of four that I'm going to go through with you today as to why we remain inactive. So the second reason is that we believe that it's impossible to walk away from alcohol to the point that we would never even entertain it. Not unless it really came to a cruncher where we were admitted to hospital and told that if we don't stop drinking, we're going to die. OK, then we might. And even then people don't. If there was a loved one who gave us an ultimatum and said, sober up, sort yourself out, all this is over, you know, your family is breaking up. Then that might be the point where we wake up to ourselves and do take action. But the fact remains that largely we think it's impossible. And there are a number of thought processes that go through this cause and effect, which lead us to believe that. And so we're naturally capable people. Many of us have professions and so we, we can do stuff. We do lots of different stuff. As women, we multitask. We do all kinds of different things. And so we can do all these different things. And the way it works is this. I'm having difficulty controlling alcohol, which means that I can't guarantee and regularly trust myself to be able to control alcohol, which means that controlling alcohol or stopping drinking is very, very hard because I can do all these other things in my life. Which means that when it comes to alcohol, either I'm a failure or it's impossible or maybe both. And that's what we think because we've had an experience of trying to control something and it not working. Our natural conclusion from that a couple of steps down the road is that it's impossible and that we're weak and we just can't do it. And I'm faced with that. It doesn't make, you know, it makes perfect sense that we just give up and don't try. But it's like going into the ring in a circus with a lion and trying to tame it when we don't really have to and we've not got the skills and we just can't do it. And so far better to just walk away than actually stay in the ring trying to tame something. Because that's what we've been doing up until now. We've been trying to control something and we've been using the wrong method. So it's when we realize that actually it is possible because my subconscious mind is what's been stopping me actually control alcohol and actually face the problem and to do something about it. It's not impossible. It is hugely, hugely possible. And in fact, it's much, much, much easier to diminish alcohol in your life to nothing so that it disappears and you just don't want it at all. Then there's no war, there's no battle and it's easy. So the thought processes lead us to think that it's impossible for us. The third reason that we stay stuck and do nothing about an alcohol problem is that we just can't imagine a future without it because it's so much part of our life right now. And our natural biology and survival instincts mean that we want to stay doing what we've always done. You're familiar with the term comfort zone, get out of your comfort zone. Well, this is one time when just to step forwards, take an action is going to make such a difference. And that subconscious mind, which is keeping you stuck, thinks it's helping you and it's not. It's like a little child that doesn't know that it can actually, you know, grow up to be the person to, to get on a train and go into town. It just doesn't know that yet. And so your conscious mind deciding that you want to do something different is what's going to carry you through. 
And so if we believe something's impossible, what I'd like you to do for a moment is just to imagine yourself as two different people. There's the person who drinks, who you are right now. And there's the person in the future. And and right now you have a choice. You can be the person in the future who carries on doing exactly the same thing you're doing today. Who will wake up with a hangover next Saturday morning full of remorse and guilt and anxiety, anxiety, feeling horrendous. Or you can imagine yourself being somebody else, being that person who wakes up just feeling amazing. And with that comes so much confidence, I can tell you from my own experience, that you just can't imagine until you're in that place. So imagine a person who is you, who has taken a different path, who is massively, massively confident and just doesn't want to drink. Now the difference between the person who takes the path that just carries on doing the same thing and the person who is you who takes yourself to a different place the difference between one and the other are a couple of very very essentially simple changes in thinking and so the way to be that different person is to first of all shift yourself believing having a little bit of faith that it is possible You've just been using the wrong method. And that just taking a couple of steps will take you to a different different destination. Imagine you're taking a walk in the country and you come to a fork and there's a step to the right, which is to carry on, and this step to the left, which is to do something different. Now, you don't know what's at the end of that path. Well, we can guess. And we don't necessarily know how we're going to navigate our way there. But just by taking that step onto that fork, towards being in a different place, doing something different. That is all we need to do to make the chain start shifting. And so to get unstuck, to to begin to, I won't even say solve a problem, but okay, we, we, we understand what I'm saying. To, to make this change, it's about taking the first step. And so the things to be done are Set an intent. Learn and educate yourself around the things that I started talking about around denial. Be really positive and optimistic. I just realised I've not covered point four. Point four is that we take too long a term a view when we're trying to you know, face the fact that we might have a problem. So coupled with the fact that we're, we're still in denial, we think it's impossible for us. We can't imagine what it would be like, although hopefully I've started to paint a picture. And also thinking we've got to make you know, a lifelong commitment. And, and I'm saying to you today, you don't need to make a lifelong commitment. That will happen if it's right for you. Just set an intent. So set the intent number one. Be excited that there is something else and that there's an easier way to solve this and to thrive, not survive, but to thrive. Learn and educate. I'm here to help you. These articles like this are part of that. They're part of the process. Just listening to this video right here, right now, is already changing your, your thinking. You're standing at that point and that fork. One step, oh, I'm going to learn some stuff about this. It's really interesting what she's talking about. Maybe maybe there's something in it. You'll begin to take that path. So being excited and also non-judgmental about yourself, about what's happened in the past. Yesterday's yesterday. Just let that go. You know, forgive yourself. Be compassionate. Getting addicted to addictive stuff. You know, it's something that happens if we take enough of it. I was addicted myself and now I'm not. So everything I'm telling you are, are, is a process that I've gone through myself and I now teach others to go through as well. So I hope that's been interesting. I hope it's been insightful. And um, if you're stuck on the fence, just make that shift. One step is all you need.